I think there are times when religion gets in the way. I was thinking about the lessons that you just read. You know, the, the Bible can be confusing. And the Bible is God's word. But it's God's word as expressed by people who believed in him. Because the Bible is also an intensely human book because it's about the spiritual journey of the people who were touched by God's presence. And the key is, how does that word that Nick just read, how does it apply to you and me in the way we live our life tomorrow? In 1 Timothy it says this, we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. That's true. I mean, to whom and where we're born is just happenstance. And then when it's all over, at the end, I can't take your trophies and your money and your accomplishments with you. You're, it's, it's over. So what we do in between those days is, is kind of up to us. Like I think of Matty Stepanek. He lived 13 years. He came into the world with nothing. Lived 13 years with a significant disability, and he left the world with nothing except what he left behind has changed my life. His message, his spirit about the heart song. I mean, what a, what a gift. 13 years, and we'll be talking about him forever. And there's my buddy Adam. Parents are here today. Sister, future husband. <laughs> and uh, Adam, uh, you've seen his picture several times, many times. And I think Adam's been gone like 27 years. He only lived to be 16. He came into the world with nothing. Luckily, he had a great family. And then when he left the world, only 16 years later. And after 27 years, he continues to change my life every single day. If I could leave half of that behind. And the thing is, all of us are going to leave this world someday. And the question is, when we do leave this world, what will we leave behind? We can't take it with us. So whatever we got, we need to share it. Give it away. Use it with faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Don't store up treasures on earth. And I like my treasures. I like my house. I like my pickup truck. There's stuff that I like. But that's not the important stuff. All you gotta do is see the news and see the fires and see the floods. In a moment of time, we could lose everything. The most important thing are those treasures that we carry inside the guts and fiber of who we are, because that stuff will never go away. The hope, the sharing, the generosity of spirit. But there are times when religion can kind of get in the way. I, I mentioned in my thought for the day, this gentleman who was a total stranger who came in to talk to me. That's how desperate he was. He came to talk to me to get his life fixed. <laughs> and he's a religious guy. He goes to church every single Sunday. He's read the Bible three times, the New Testament four times. And he's, he says, Don, I, I'm just trying to find something that will hold me together. And I tried to say, maybe it's time to take religion and just put it aside for a minute. When religion becomes a burden, <clears throat> Jesus saw it in his own religion. I'm sure you've seen it, and I've seen it. Sometimes we have to let simplicity become majesty. Instead of trying so hard to find the spirit, maybe we got to step back and let the spirit in. Maybe instead of trying so hard to find God, we need to step back and let God find us, and God has already found us. Maybe we need to step back, and instead of trying to be strong all the time, just let the simplicity of your humanity be, and know that whatever your humanity is going through, God is there holding you in the palm of his hand. You know, I don't know what the future will bring. I mean, people say, is the church ever going to come back? Well, the church is back. But I mean, would you ever think that after all these years, we still have all these empty seats? Did you ever think that most people would be watching church on television instead of coming here? I mean, who knows what the church is going to be like? Will it be bigger? I doubt it. Will it be smaller? Maybe. But it's always going to be the church because the church is you and me and our spirit and the journey we take when we go out the front door. Most importantly, we need to be a place of simplicity and grace. And if we have the faith and we have the grace, 
then the rest of the stuff will eventually come together. But we'll never stop being the church. That's why I kind of like what we're going to do with the steak fry, because the steak fry is a great evening. But a couple of you said, can we take some time and light a candle and remember those that we've lost over the past year and a half or almost two years? Because sometimes just pausing and remembering those that we've lost and saying goodbye brings us some closure. Because that is what the church is. Like one person said, I'm not afraid to die, Don. I'm just afraid of being forgotten. <laughs> and that's true. You know, we want to know that when we leave this earth, that something about us will endure in the people that were left behind. You know, I, uh, there are just lots of people I think about. You know, I think about, I've talked about Johnny Grandforce before. In fact, Johnny was in the youth group with Adam. <laughs> and Johnny kind of went his own way. And uh, he accidentally saw the thought for the day about a year and a half ago. <laughs> that was his first mistake. Now he's hooked. And now we connect. And his mom is dying. And he said, Don, can you please let the congregation know that my mom needs your prayers? And her church is her computer and her TV. She's still here very much. I think of Billy Colgan. You know, he's my 86-year-old buddy who lives in Hawaii. You've, you've, I'm sure you've never met him. But he, he has a buddy named Doug, his best friend. And he said, called me yesterday. He said, Don, in church, please pray for Doug because I know your prayers are going to make a difference. And then there's Linda Driggers, who is always here at the early service. And she has so much pain, she can hardly stand it. And she's trying to get an appointment. And I said, Linda, we're going to pray for you. I wish we could ease the pain, but we can be reminded that you're in the palm of God's hand. I guess it's the reminder that wherever we go, wherever we walk, that humble carpenter and his sandals are always with us. So when religion gets in the way, simplicity opens the door, and that is where healing begins. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed. <clears throat>